Thanks for staying with us for News Channel 13 at 4.30. I'm Bart Bedsoll. New at 4.30, nurses with criminal convictions in other states have moved to Colorado for work over the years because of a less rigorous background check here. Well, now state regulators want to change that. KRDO News Channel 13's Angelica Lombardi is live at Memorial Hospital with the details. Angelica. Well, Bart, right now, fingerprint background checks are a requirement in several states, except for five of them, including Colorado. We just require a regular background check, but state legislators are hoping to change this. State Representative Janet Buckner is spearheading this. The motivation are cases where cir surgical techs stole syringes filled with painkillers from Swedish Medical Center. That happened in Colorado. The man was caught, fired, and sentenced to six and a half years in prison. Another case where this is similar is at University of Colorado Hospital, where a nurse there stole vials of painkillers and replaced them with other substances. Now, it is the law to require a background check to hire medical professionals and to pass the board. However, applicants can lie, and that's why regulators want to switch to fingerprint background checks to ensure the best safety for patients. Leaders at American Medical Response say they agree with this move. I think it's important for integrity. I mean, we're going in and out of people's homes on a daily basis. The, the citizens need to have a trust in the people that are out there caring for them. The legislature has already passed the measure and it's awaiting the governor's signature. I also spoke with several students at UCCS in the nursing program there about how th this would affect them. We'll hear from them and have much more on this measure ahead at 5. For now, reporting live in Colorado Springs, Angelica Lombardi, KRDO News Channel 13. All right, Angelica, thanks. We'll see you then. Weather is proven to be double trouble for the southern Colorado town of Aguilar in Los Animas County. Neighbors say the latest snowstorm dumped up to a foot of snow in some areas of the small community. That snow buried much of the debris from last week's high winds, and that is slowing the cleanup effort. Residents lost power for up to four days in Aguilar. A crew of San Isabel electric workers tried to do as much cleanup as possible while also digging through all that snow. This is the worst street. This is the worst part of town right here on this street is where most of the damage was done and things. I know my daughter lives up on the hill and her roof was damaged and there's people with roof damage. One resident says he'd like to see better communication in town because most neighbors have landlines that went out with the power and cell services limited. Coming up at 5, we'll show you how the snow changed a cleanup plan scheduled for today. Well, we get to enjoy the sunshine today after a few good weeks of heavy snow, or at least the threat of it. Here's a live look right now from Monument, I-25 and 105, 43 degrees, but man, it feels so much better when that sun is out to go with it. Let's go to Mike Everett for the latest on what's happening out there. Mike? That was a rough week last week, Bart, and I feel like we have earned this. Live HD Doppler radar right now showing us clean and clear conditions across the region. We are seeing some of that high cloud cover up there, but not stopping us from having a gorgeous day. There was some of that fog. In fact, there was a dense fog advisory in the Arkansas River Valley earlier today. That's been allowed to expire and even some sunshine happening out there. The one place where it has been persistent is in the San Luis Valley there, especially near Alamosa. Looks like you'll get a chance to see some sunshine on Thursday. We'll talk about that in the full forecast. In the meantime, if you are heading out tonight, it's going to cool off, but not drastically. Pueblo and the Springs will be tied 35 at 7 p.m. By the time we get to 10 o'clock, we're going to be getting into the mid to upper 20s and those skies should stay mostly clear tonight. Not Nice, beautiful half moon laying on its side out there. Make sure you get out and take a look at that. In the early morning hours, we'll be in the mid 20s in Pueblo and in the Springs, and then we're going to warm up nicely into the mid 50s. Another nice tie there at noon, 53s for both of us, 49 by 4 o'clock in the Springs, 55 in Pueblo, and we will start to see some of that cloud cover build in as we track our next weather maker moving in from the West Coast. So it was nice while it lasted, but as we're taking a look here out towards the West, another strong storm. Bringing a lot of warm moisture and hammering, especially north and central California and into Oregon as well. That will start creeping into Colorado starting on Thursday. And by the time we get into Thursday evening, we will see some of that cloud cover start to build for most of us and a whole new round of snow moving into the mountains. We're going to break down the timing of that and exactly when you can expect it and how much you can expect to see coming up in my full forecast. Bart, back to you. Mike, thanks. We'll see you then. The proposed franchise fee could a hike up cable customers. Bills in Colorado Springs, that higher fee would pay for city communication services like a 311 phone system. If approved, 
By the city, officials say that would allow for easier communication between citizens and the city. 311 is already used in 42 cities to help people get answers about government regulations and other problems. But while some say the service would be a help, at least one city council member believes it's not needed. I believe that having someone there to help explain things to you and help give you guidance um, and propose, you know, solutions to your problems in person over the phone. I feel like that could be helpful for a lot of people. Right now, um, I, really the feedback I'm hearing is all negative. People are opposed to this fee and so I'm likely to probably vote in opposition. If passed, most customers can expect to see a 3.5% increase in their cable bills this year and a 4.5% increase next year. City Council will hold its first public hearing on the issue at 5.30 tomorrow night to discuss the fee. Pueblo area home sales are topping 2006 levels for the first time. According to the Pueblo Association of Realtors, last year's $426 million in purchases marked the first year that home sales topped the $390 million spent back in 2006. 2016 spending also was more than double the $204 million in purchases in 2011. That was the low point of the market's 10-year slump. The average days on market also fell to 93 days from the previous 104 days. A Colorado Springs man is in custody after he was caught with a stolen weapon and meth. 35-year-old Michael Powell was arrested last night at a mobile home in the 5100 block of Airport Road. Parole officers were sent to check on him and reportedly found him working on two guns on the roof of his car. One of the guns was reported stolen last year. Police say Powell was also found with 100 grams of methamphetamine. Charges have not been filed yet. A Colorado Springs man accused of killing three people and injuring another will be back in court later this month. Richard Spanks was advised of the charges against him during a video hearing yesterday. Investigators say Spanks and Haywood Miller are responsible for two separate shootings. The first was at this apartment complex on Carmel Drive in November, where 21-year-old Marcus Williams was found dead. And just days later, 33-year-old Jacqueline Klein and 23-year-old Victoria Loftus were found dead at a home on Mosswood Lane. Neighbors say knowing Spanx has been caught does put them at ease. And I was home, and I think it was a terrible act for him to go in and kill those two ladies because he said they said that one of them was still breathing, and he went back. Spanx is expected back in court next Monday. A former Memorial Hospital employee and volunteer at Coronado High School accused of sexual assault and Internet luring of a child has pleaded not guilty. Matthew Wilson is charged with enticement of a child and bodily injury. His trial is set to begin April 11th. Looking ahead to tonight, the Fountain Police Department will hold a spaghetti dinner to benefit one of their own. That benefit is being held for the family of Officer Dave Langfell Sr. Officer Langfell's passed away January 10th. The fundraiser and celebration of his life will begin at 5 tonight with a silent auction at Fountain Fort Carson High School. Children under 3 can get in for free with tickets for those 12 and under costing $5. Tickets for adults will be $15 at the door. Officer Langfell's has worked with Fountain Police since 2001. The teen who was kidnapped at birth breaks her silence, saying she will always love her abductor mother and begs that she be spared prison time. New at 4.30, ABC's Elizabeth Herr has the latest. Despite being kidnapped as a newborn, Alexis Manigo still calls the woman accused of snatching her mom. This is all I want people to know. She was a great mother. I will never have malice for her. No hate towards her. I will always love her. Authorities say Gloria Williams pretended to be a nurse, then stole Manigo from a hospital in Jacksonville, Florida, just hours after she was born. I just want to know where my baby is at. I just want my baby back. Manigo, who was named Camille Mobley by her parents, became the subject of an international manhunt. Earlier this month, DNA testing revealed the 18-year-old was not Williams' biological daughter. The 51-year-old Williams was arrested and charged with kidnapping Manigo. She made her first court appearance today, and the judge offered no bail on the kidnapping charge. I understand what she did was wrong, but just don't lock her up and throw away the key. She loved me for 18 years. She cared for me for 18 years. After years of hoping, Manigo's biological parents met her for the very first time 
last week. I never gave up hope. I always thought I'd find it. Yeah, to find out I have another family, you know, that's even more love. Alexa says she doesn't know when she will see Williams again, but she hopes it will be soon. For now, Williams remains in jail, due back in court in three weeks. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. Gorgeous live look for you from Woodland Park right now. There's America's Mountain from the other side. 47 degrees up there. Gorgeous day, calm winds, but we are tracking in some stuff that could move in as early as Thursday evening. I've got all the details coming up. Also ahead, 2016 was a record year for the planet, but it's one you might not want to meddle for. Why this record has some scientists concerned. And coming up after weather, the Cirque is in town, and we'll give you a sneak peek of Cirque du Soleil Ovo. Don't go away. Earth sizzled to a third straight record hot year in 2016. That's according to the World Meteorological Organization. To come up with the figures, the WMO combined global temperature records from various sources, including NOAA, NASA, the UK Met Office, and the European Weather and Climate Center. Temperatures over the Earth's continents and oceans in 2016 were 1.1 degrees Celsius above the pre industrial average. That means we are already close to the 1.5 degree warming limit set at the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015. Here's a live look from Cripple Creek where they are certainly enjoying the climate out there today and especially that last half hour or so of sunshine before it goes beyond the mountains there. Storm Tracker 13's Mike Everett is tracking our temperatures for us today. Mike? I am indeed, and you still see a little bit of snow on the ground there. We're going to get another chance to do some melting on Thursday. In fact, we're going to take temperatures up just a hair over what we saw today. Today wasn't bad, but you know that can't last. We're going to see another round of weather moving in from California. Another big, look at how large that is. It's very wet, it's very warm, and it's moving this way fairly quickly. I expect to make it into Colorado starting on Thursday. We could see some flurries in parts of our region as early as Thursday evening. We'll use Skycast to break that down for you, but enjoy this ridge of high pressure while it lasts. I'm also tracking a little bit of rain that's just now making its way out of Texas up towards Memphis there. This one doesn't seem Seem particularly severe, but look at how much is coming in with this one on radar. You've got a lot of really warm, wet there, air there, but above the 11,000 foot mark, 
Sierra Nevada is getting another strong round of snow. Skiers and snowboarders up there and water fans in general, very, very happy with this winter so far. Putting Skycast in motion, we were tracking some of that dense fog in the early morning hours along the Arkansas River Valley. They allowed that warning to expire, but as we go into the evening hours tonight, I do expect some of that to rebuild in there, especially near Lamar and the Kansas State Line. So give yourself a little bit of extra space if you're driving there tonight. Looks like that should clear out in the early morning hours. This is 6.30 on Thursday. But for the rest of us, we're going to see some beautiful sunshine, except for in the San Luis Valley. It's going to take you a while to clear some of that out there near Alamosa. By 1.30, you should start to see the sun. And for the most part, we're going to see another beautiful day, very similar to the one we saw today. But we talked about this Thursday evening. This is 9.30. We start to see that new round of snow moving in. Look at how fast it comes in from California. And what that means is in the later hours of Thursday night and into Friday morning, we could start to see some flurries up in Teller County and Fremont County, definitely out towards Salida. But this one has the same signature as the last one in the sense that it's going to come in warm and wet. So around 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday, we're going to see the first band move through here as wet snow. I'm not expecting a lot in the way of accumulations, and by the time most of us even get out of bed, that will already be making its way towards I-70 and through Denver. We're going to keep an eye on this one, though, and see if anything changes between now and then. Overnight lows tonight will be very similar to what we saw last night. Some teens out towards Lamar. We'll see 20s for the most part. 22, a very popular number in Springfield, La Junta, Pueblo. Canyon City will get 28 and more single digits with mostly Clear skies in Gunnison, five overnight tonight in Alamosa, 13 in Leadville. Promise you a warmer day on Thursday. Here it is. We're going to get into the upper 40s in Lamar, 51 in Springfield, 53 in the Springs, 55 in Pueblo, 54 Canyon City. Do yourself a favor, get out and at least enjoy a little bit of that because it will not last long. 51 is what you'll see in Boone, 54 in Canyon City, 44 in Texas Creek. You're going to see 49 in Peyton, 48 in Calhan, a nice round 50 in Monument. Even in Woodland Park, we'll get back up to 45 again, 41 in Cripple Creek. And if you're on top of Pikes Peak, 25 is the high you'll see. As we go towards the weekend, we saw that on Skycast in the very early morning hours of Friday. I am expecting a quick band to move through. Another chance to see some of that moving in on Saturday, and temperatures will pull back into the 30s, but very similar to what we saw last weekend. Daytime temperatures will be well above freezing, so for the most part, anything that moves through here will either be wet snow, grapple, or maybe a little bit of cold rain. We warm back up into the 40s again Sunday and Monday, and then another more significant weather maker moves in on Tuesday. Tuesday and Wednesday, it'll pull temperatures back into the 20s and 30s. Pueblo, you got a nice day ahead on Thursday. Get out and enjoy it because we're going to pull you back into the lower 40s by Saturday. Light flurries possible for you as well. We'll keep an eye on that. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, another more significant storm on the horizon. Canyon City, 54 on Thursday. We're going to reverse that and make you 45 on Friday. We're going to keep you in the 40s through the weekend there and keep an eye on your flurry chances. And then cooler weather moving in next week. Teller County, a nice. 45 for you on Thursday. You saw that 10% chance to see some flurries move in late. You'll see that early morning on Friday as well. Another possibility on Saturday, and your temperatures will be closer to freezing, so we'll keep a close eye on that. But models so far not really excited about accumulating snow. But of course, as always, if that changes, we'll let you know. Well, I like today's model. I'm going to focus on today's for a while. Just don't blink because it may change quickly. And enjoy that. what you have. Absolutely. All right, Mike, thanks. They dazzle us through the air with their acrobatics, but along with the trademarked Cirque du Soleil distinct. And grace comes extensive training. Cirque performers for O OVO teamed up this week with athletes from Pinnacle Weightlifting Club in Colorado Springs. It's an Olympic weightlifting and sports training facility. Many of the artists learn several new techniques there. We do know that strength is probably the best thing to prevent injuries. So this today is really appropriate for us because uh, the more conditioned that our artists are, the less likely they are to get injured. The easier my job is. OVO will perform at the Broadmoor World Arena in Colorado Springs from January 18th to the 22nd. Tickets are still available. They start at $40 apiece. If you're interested in checking out the show, we've added a special link to our website. Just click on the hot button at krdo.com. Losing weight might be one of your New Year's resolutions, but now you might be hitting a plateau. Coming up in two minutes, some tips to help push you to the next level. And later in the newscast, this cat is going viral on the internet. Find out how much fur was on the feline before being rescued by an anti-cruelty society. Look like a tree trunk or something.
if you've made a resolution to eat better or get into shape, you may be familiar with the dreaded plateau around this time. That's when your weight loss slows down or even stops. So here are some tips for pushing past that plateau. Review your habits. Make sure you haven't slacked off workouts or let your diet slip. Also, add more movement to your day. Think outside the gym. Maybe take in the stairs instead of the elevator or escalator. Maybe park a little farther from the door at the mall. Also, rev up your workout. Increase your workout time or the intensity, or just mix it up. Try a new machine or exercise. Weightlifting can also increase your muscle mass, which will help burn more calories. If none of those steps work, talk to your doctor or a dietitian. Whatever you do, don't give up. You're only about three weeks in. Artificial intelligence, it's the newest feature in your smartphone and even in some cars. So why not your doctor? Well, that's the idea behind Forward Health Center in San Francisco. Doctors at the center use high-tech scanning equipment to get all of your medical data in as little as 12 minutes. They also send wearable tech home with patients to get even more data about their habits. The center requires a $150 monthly membership, according to the CEO of Forward. That monthly fee could save patients thousands more in the long run. A heart attack, which cost a hundred plus thousand dollars to deal with, could have been dealt with for literally just single digit dollars if we had dealt with it extremely early. The clinic also uses genetic testing to determine a patient's risk for various diseases. Here's a live look right now from My25 and Guard to the Gods. The evening commute just getting started. Looks a bit slow on the northbound, or that is the southbound side, but it is to be expected around this time of day. We'll be right back. Couldn't tell what that was. Uh, mic check one two, mic check one two on backpack three, mic check one two. Stand by. Let me get Scott. The audio check. Yeah. Okay. Sound check. One two three. Audio check. Test. One two three. Testing. One two three. Sound check. Audio check. Test. One two three. Testing. One two three. Sound check. Audio check. Okay. Test. Okay. The world's oldest giant panda is celebrating her birthday. Basie, the oldest giant panda living in captivity, is now turning 37. It was wearing a crown and getting a special birthday kick this week. Tourists eagerly snapped photos as Basie, whose age is equivalent to 140 human years, slurped a soup of maize, flour, and eggs. Mmm, Mike, that's good. From a cake shaped bowl at the Fuju Giant Panda Research Center. One more story for you. This is Sinbad the cat who continues to make a miraculous recovery after being rescued and having five pounds of fur shaved off. 
He'll soon be put up for adoption and maybe the fur sold on eBay. We'll see you at five. Yes, uh, Mike Chuck, right now, fingerprints, background checks are required in most states, but not in Colorado. Colorado is one of five states where we do normal background checks without the fingerprints. But is that enough? Turn it up just a little bit. Right now, Colorado is one of five states where finger background, fingerprint background checks are not required. Mike Chuck, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Sounds good, is it? From Southern Colorado's high-definition news leader, this is News Channel 13, where the news comes first. First, it was last week's strong winds causing extensive damage here in Aguilar. Now, it's snow covering the debris that's slowing cleanup efforts. We'll have an update tonight. No strong winds or snow in the forecast over the next 24 hours, but we will see some changes. Could bring some flurries in here starting Thursday night. Details coming up. All of our employees are background checked by the state of Colorado. So if they come from another state, they have to go through that same process. Colorado is one of a few states where only a background check and not a fingerprint check is required to obtain a medical license, but state regulators are now working to change that. Also, inauguration day is two days away, but President-elect Donald Trump is getting the festivities started early. Thanks for choosing KRDO News Channel 13.